Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Ruksana Rahman from the Department of Women's Studies, Guwahati University. I will be speaking on gender and the politics of domination and inequality. In this lecture, we will be dealing with particularly different issues related to feminist ethics, gender, domination, inequality, sexuality and also military sociology. Now let us discuss with the introduction of gender and the concept of the politics of domination and inequality. Gender is an important component in the study of both conflict and conflict resolution. However, the irony is that realist, neorealist, neoliberals, peace researchers, behavioralist and empiricist never used gender as a category of analysis. Thus, the true clash of civilization does not take place between Christian and Muslims, but the chasm between men and women. In addition, the fact is that the inclusion and importance of gender is very pertinent both in minimizing and mitigating conflicts at the local, state, national and international levels. Promoting human rights and democracy would have little impact unless gender is counted in the policy making processes. However, historically, the concept, idea and practice of gender equality both as an analytical point and the discourse have been grossly neglected. Both men and women have traditionally neglected the effectiveness of gender equality. Even if men are considered the instruments of promoting and strengthening gender inequality, women are also equally responsible for tacitly supporting the masculine dominated discourse of gender inequality and domination. The reasons behind this tacit support of women could be many. Women were always confined to the home and child bearing and rearing seemed to naturally locate themselves inside their homes. This could also have led to their lack of education and contributed to a society where man became dominant. No one questioned this hierarchy. Pervasive presence of gender inequality is a common feature in every society whether in the society of developed countries or developing countries. Though there have been efforts in academic and policy making levels to counter the idea and the practice of gender inequality and domination, still gender inequality is clearly visible in different social, economic, political and cultural fields. Different studies have found that gender equality is a vital instrument to minimize and mitigate conflict in both developed and developing countries. Some scholars also argue that the study of gender and promoting gender equality is more essential and relevant in Asia, Africa and the Latin American countries because these countries are conflict ridden areas which grievously affect both the conditions of women's security and the role of women in minimizing this conflict like situations. A number of academic scholars have raised their voices against gender inequality, gender domination and violence. Prominent figures of gender studies are Carol Cohn, Cynthia Anlo, Jennifer Claude, Patricia Owen, J. Ann Tickner, 
Caprioli, Christine Sylvester, Laura Zoberg and many others. It is very important to conceptualize the concept of gender before discussing the concept of gender in terms of domination and inequality. So, let us discuss about the conceptualization of gender. The concept of gender is not a pre-given or an idea that actually exists. It is created, analyzed and used both in the forms of discourse and practice. It is now widely accepted that the idea of gender is socially constructed. It is a consortium of society that over a long period of time became accepted as a universal truth. It is a construction of society that over a long period of time became accepted as a universal truth. It is only now being studied as a concept that has been constructed by society. It includes the study of both men and women and their social, political, cultural and economic behaviors both at the national and the international levels. According to Tickner in the year 1997, I quote, gender is not just about women, it is also about man and masculinity, unquote. There is a common understanding among people in society that men and women are from different worlds and their behavior and thinking are different. This understanding shaped and created the fixed binary oppositions are reflected in the forms of public versus private, objective versus subjective, self versus other, reason versus emotion, autonomy versus relatedness and culture versus nature. The first of each pair of characteristics is typically associated with masculinity, the second with femininity. However, it can be stated that this both masculinity and the femininity are nothing but the social constructions. Historically, differences between men and women have been understood from the perspective of biology. For example, the reproductive capability of women and biological characteristics constrain the behavior of women. However, biological constraints should not be used as defining elements to determine political, cultural, economic and social aspects of human beings, both men and women. It has been observed that the idea of gender is socially constructed by taking into account the biological characteristics which result in fixed binary opposition, quote unquote. The idea and the practice of the fixed binary opposition quote unquote originated in western culture and legitimizes the masculine and feminine relation which is based on inequality and domination. Lauren Wilcox explains that I quote, gender symbolism describes the way in which masculine or feminine are assigned to various dichotomies that organize western thought, unquote. This means an idea which is created can be redefined with the passing of time. Gender as an idea is created and therefore can be redefined because the changing nature of national and international situations demand the deconstructing of the idea. The social construction of an idea is not permanent, it is dynamic. According to B. Thomas Slater et al. cited in Britain in 1998 in the page number 90, I quote, gender is a dynamic 
historically and culturally determined social construct created by men and women to define their relationship with each other and the environment. Now let us discuss about gender inequality and domination. Gender is not only a social construct but also created women's operation quote unquote. The social construction of gender also creates a cognitive structure when masculine domination is inscribed in bodies and minds. This means that people perceive and accept the masculine domination and inequality which is created by the social structure. Thus, gender inequality and domination are the result of spontaneous agreement of both the social and cognitive structures. The nature and manifestation of women's operation and gender hierarchy has both national and international implications. The idea and the practice of gender is pervasive in the international world. According to Anglo, I quote, the personal is international, unquote, and I quote, the international is personal, unquote. Understanding the concept of gender and domination is incomplete if the analysis ignores the realist theory and its concept of human nature and power. A couple of factors need to be examined in the context of gender and domination. Firstly, according to Hans G. Morgantou and Kenneth W. Thompson in the year 2001, politics is governed by objective laws that have their roots in human nature. Tickner argues the emphasis of human nature and objectivity are associated with masculinity which is based on power and domination. It is not possible to work out a universal and objective foundation for knowledge. Tickner in the year 1988 in page number 432 ever that I quote, most share the belief that knowledge is socially constructed since it is language that transmits knowledge. The use of language and its claims of objectivity must continually be questioned." Unquote. Keller also subscribes to this argument. In addition to this, Tickner believes that human nature is both masculine and feminine and that human nature contains elements of social reproduction and development as well as political domination. Secondly, Mogentu defines power as the control of man over man, quote unquote. This understanding of power as domination reinforces the masculine activity and, I quote, rarely have women exercised legitimized power in the public domain, unquote. Power as a domination ignores the collective empowerment, quote, unquote, where women are also an important part of it. In international politics, realist theory is very much dominant and at the same time the ideas human nature, objectivity and power of the theory also prevail both in theory and practice. Both the objective laws and power are understood and explained from the masculine perspective where women have insignificant role and that promotes gender inequality and masculine domination. Thereby we can relate the issues of domination and inequality to the social construction of gender that is masculinity and femininity. The recognition by international humanitarian criminal and human rights law of the ways in which 
women are affected by violence during armed conflict has greatly expanded the normative international framework for their protection. Key among such provisions of the Geneva Conventions and Protocols, General Recommendations No. 19 of CEDAW, the first United Nations document to acknowledge that women suffer disproportionately from violence because of discrimination and binding SC resolutions, particularly 1820 in the year 2008, which establishes that rape can be a tactic of war, quote unquote, and a war crime, a crime against humanity or a constitutive act with respect to genocide. The spectrum of violence ranges from forms of ill treatment and torture in custody and physical and mental violence in private and public spheres to economic and social harms facilitated by restrictions on civil and political rights. The impact of military on gender can be studied by how the implementation India's Armed Forces Special Powers Act has led to gross human rights violations. Gross patterns of violence against women under AFSPA that is Armed Forces Special Power Act has been acknowledged by CEDAW and recorded by local and international human rights NGOs involving women being routinely raped, sexually assaulted, beaten or killed in their homes and in the public during military operations. There have been many cases recorded of arbitrary detention and forced labor and strong evidence to suggest that women have been tactically targeted during raids. The failings of the Indian government in this respect are also most evident. The disparity exposes both the state's lack of will to protect women and to understand what would constitute such protection. The do's and do nots have enjoyed little public awareness even after they became binding in the year 1998. In international relations, different theories accept and explain the masculine nature of politics and its domination over women and its negative consequences in different ways. For example, liberalist theorists argue that the inclusion of women in global world politics will add not only fresh perspectives but will be beneficial to all. Post-structuralism emphasizes the linguistic manifestation of meaning and focuses on the politics of semantics, the fluidity of meanings and therefore the continually evolving dynamics contained in them, particularly binaries like strong, oblique, weak, rational, oblique, emotional and so on. Postcolonial feminists on the other hand critic colonialism and imperialism for their role in shaping the dynamics of domination and subordination. Most importantly, Marxists have added another dimension by laying the responsibility and the cause of women's oppression at the door of capitalism, while radical feminists blame the patriarchal system of the domination is to be blamed for the domination of women. However, it is clear that the issue of women's marginalization is not a question that a simple and can be satisfactorily explained by a single theory. Rather, all these theories together contribute to the holistic understanding of the subject.
of gender, domination and inequality. Now, let us discuss something about unequal gender roles. The unequal gender roles, imposition of western values, patriarchal systems, demographic composition, absence of gender as an analytical factor are the prominent issues that are linked with gender and conflict. This is because gender differentiated roles promote state or male dominated discourse of conflict which is militarized and smacks of violence. Unequal gender relations are important for sustaining military activities of states. In military conflicts, women are the real victims. Western values based on rationality and autonomy have universal application. However, most of the Western scholars argue that all women are not capable or should not be encouraged to attain values such as the attainment of enlightenment, autonomy and rationality. A prominent and influential philosopher like Immanuel Kant also argued that women are not capable of achieving rationality which is an integral part of moral character. He also denied education to women because it would inhibit the process of man's development. I quote, nothing of duty, nothing of compulsion, nothing of obligation. Women is intolerant of all commands and morals constraint. They do something only because it pleases them. And the art of moral education consists in making only that please them which is good. I hardly believe that the fair sex is capable of principles. In place of its providence has put in their breast kind and benevolent sensations." Unquote. Women were not even included in most of the original social contracts by the social contract theorists in the western tradition. Likewise, at the time of the foundation of the modern western state, particularly with the beginning of capitalism, women were not considered as citizens and their lives were restricted only to the private sphere, which grossly sacrificed their economic security as they were dependent on males for their survival. V. Spike Peterson also reinforces Western values and its implication for women's security. Masculine dominance is institutionalized by the sovereignty contract. Quote unquote. In this historical context, politics as a concept and an action is rendered the sexual contract quote unquote of modern European state making which is simultaneously and not coincidentally the making of rational man, the sovereign subject and political agency, finitely masculine and political identity is gendered both conceptually in terms of how we think about political agency, subjectivity and subjective relations and empirically in terms of how we organize political activities, structures and objective relations. Inequalities between men and women can be traced to the patriarchal system which extends from the household to global economy and polity. It operates both in the public and the private spheres. It excludes women in different decision making process both in the public and the private spheres in order to ensure their political subordination and economic exploitation. 
Feminists argue that patriarchy is the structural and ideological system that perpetuates world processes of empire building. The tendency of empire building causes conflict at the international level and marginalizes the role and the issues of women. According to Enlo, patriarchal systems are notable for marginalizing the feminine. Where any society or group is patriarchal, it ignores, trivializes or even actively casts scorn upon whatever is thought to be feminized. It is in patriarchal societies that whatever is considered to be masculine is comfortable and unquestioned. Disproportion of demographical composition also promotes conflict in the society. This means that the dominance of man in the society causes more conflict. The surplus of male in the main cause of violence in Asia, particularly in China and in India, that is cited in the Hudson Bay War 2004, cited in McDermott in 2015, page number 19. In a male dominated society, the state pursues militant and masculine policies. States with sex ratios that drastically favors men will be more inclined towards military action. However, it is very important to understand that while we are discussing about gender inequality and domination, there are some problems in the politics of analysis also. So now let us discuss about the problems of levels of analysis. The level of analysis is an important aspect to look into the issue of gender inequality, domination and conflict. The term level means specification of a particular location where a particular issue is analyzed, observed and interpreted. According to Buzan, Waver and Weld, levels are locations where, I quote, both outcomes and sources of explanations can be located, unquote. It is observed that few scholars have emphasized the state level analysis of gender and few international level of analysis. Caprioli argues that state level analysis is important because most of the activities and policies related to gender take place at the state level and should be considered as a primary actor for shaping the gender discourse. According to Caprioli, in the year 2004, page number 506, operation of state-based system gives more power to the state and therefore, the state is the primary instrument for reducing gender discrimination. However, this argument of Caprioli's has been refuted by Anlo. And Lo argues for shifting the analysis from state level to international level. According to Marnissi, cited in Belgian 2004, page number 502, understanding the international politics of women insecurities requires looking at how security policies of states enhance women's insecurities by making it more difficult for them to voice their concerns. In the Arab world, for instance, this requires the analyst to turn his or her gaze to successive generations of Arab women who were made feel unpatriotic if they made radical demands from their governments such as the right to basic education in the face of successive treats posed by colonialism, US oblique Soviet interventionism and Israeli intransigences. However, gender needs a multiple level of analysis. 
it is necessary to pay attention to the conflicting situation at different levels and also work out effective mechanisms to deal with the issue. Chinoy and Van Eyck in the year 2001, page number 134, underlined the role of women in intervening in local conflicts in the states of West Bengal and Maharashtra of India. So, with this we have come to an end of the discussion of gender, inequality and politics. We have seen how the social construction of uh, masculinity and femininity, it, it affects the social construction of the concepts like inequality and domination and at the same time this lecture also have discussed about the problems of analysis that is again is happening in the case of understanding gender and the politics of inequality and domination. Thank you.